Well, welcome to the Herb of the Week with me, Stephanie Georgiev, your host, as well as the instructor of the Botanical Medicine Study Course. If you would like to be the first on your blog to be the most knowledgeable about all things botanical medicine, send me an email. The link is in the program notes, and I will send you a link to download a free introductory video lesson and handouts. According to the calendar here in Northern Hemisphere, it's finally spring. Although many in North America might not have noticed because you're buried under feet of snow or in sleet and rain and terrible winds. But what can I say? Uh, but in many places, uh, spring is actually happening at night this year. With spring, that means many things are starting to bud and bloom, warmer days, and for many, it means allergy season. I think it's going to be a doozy this year because of all the rain and snow in many areas. There will be lots of plants, and wow, I think it will be a very sneezy spring indeed, which is why the herb of the week for this first week of spring is stinging nettles. In 1532, the German botanist Otto Brunsfeld wrote, quote, Could there be anything as trifling or as despised as a nettle? What could be as beloved as a hyacinth, a narcissist, or a lily? And yet the nettle surpasses them all, unquote. The nettle was used for medicinal purposes in ancient Greece and has been used in traditional African, Indian, and Native American medicine. Elizabeth Blackwell, author of the 18th century herbal bestseller called A Curious Herbal, notes that the use of the roots, leaves, and seeds for internal bleeding, jaundice, and coughs, and as a diuretic was how it was used in those days. Nettles is still used for therapy for urinary tract diseases, kidney stones, and rheumatic ailments. In fact, if you read up on nettle, it is hard to find a use where it's not useful. It can be used for food, soil amendments, insecticide, medicine fibers, food for livestock, and the list is almost endless. Much of the research done by various governmental agencies and nonprofits points to how nettles could be an inexpensive solution to much of the world's problems when it comes to nutrition, agriculture, and textiles. During World War I, when there were blockades against the Axis powers, nettles were employed to be used in clothing and soldiers' uniform because they couldn't get access to cotton and wool. Obviously, the stinging part of the nettles was taken out for, for, fiber, for fabric, but this was news to me. Ancient Egyptians used stinging nettle to treat arthritis and lower back pain, while Roman troops rubbed it on themselves to help stay warm. And again, please do not do this to keep warm. Really, there are less dramatic and irritating ways to keep warm rather than rubbing nettles all over your feet and hands. Although some historians say it is the Romans who brought nettle seeds with them as they conquered various continents, and that is why nettles have such a wide area of growth, particularly throughout the Mediterranean region. I'm not sure if they brought these things to the Americas. I'm not sure if the Romans made it out there, but the natives have used nettles for centuries, probably millennia. Stinging nettle, also known as Urtica diochia, is a wild herbaceous perennial blooming plant that is commonly known as stinging nettle. It's a common multi-purpose crop that sometimes I would say often overlooked. Europe, Asia, North America, and North Africa are all home to stinging nettle. It's a plant that's edible and has nutritional and medicinal properties. Urtica dio dioca is a deciduous, herbaceous, perennial plant that grows anywhere from three to seven feet, which is 0.9 to two meters in metric. It's very tall in the summer and it dies down to the ground in the winter. In some species, the leaves and stems are very hairy with non-stinging hair, but in most subspecies of nettles, it has many of the signature stinging hairs 
which the official name is trichome or spicules, whose tips come off when touched, transforming the hair into a needle that can inject several chemicals causing a painful sting or paresthesia, which is a, uh, a fancy medical term for uh, nerve pain and numbness. Giving the species its common name, stinging nettle, burn nettle, burn weed, or burn hazel. But I must say, I've never heard of the last three terms. Young leaves can be used to make curries, herb soups, and sour soups. The root of stinging nettles is used to treat uh, urinary difficulties associated with benign prostatic hyperplasia, while the leaves of nettles are used to treat arthritis, rheumatism, and allergic rhinitis, which is the fancy Latin term for uh, runny nose due to allergies. The leaves of the nettles have abundant amounts of fiber, minerals, vitamins, and antioxidant compounds like polyphenols and carotenoids. And for those of you who are up on supplements, those things are like beta carotene, quercetin, those fancy words. And you can buy them in pill form or you can eat or take nettles as, as a, a supplement. Now the properties of stinging nettles are, it's called anti-proliferative, which means it stops things from growing that shouldn't be growing. Uh, it's anti-inflammatory, it's antioxidant, it's analgesic, it's anti-infectious, it's hypotensive, which means it helps lower blood pressure. And it also has anti-ulcer characteristics. Now, an aside for those of you with fish ponds, stinging nettle improves fish reproductive performance, making it a cost-effective aquaculture plant. So if you want your, your fish to, to make more baby fish, you put nettles in the pond with them. And fertilizer and insecticides can be made from nettles. In the old English tradition, nettle is one of the nine plants invoked in the pagan Anglo-Saxon nine herbs charm. And we note this, it's recorded in the 10th century traditional medicine. Now, for those of you who aren't in the know, the nine herbs charm or Nigan Verta Gador, and that is the lay of nine healing herbs or nine wart spell, among other names, is an old English charm recorded in the 10th century Anglo-Saxon medical compilation known as Langunda. And this book survives in manuscript. And for those total herbal history nerds, you can find this actually online. The British Library has all these really cool books that you can just look at online. If you're not a, a PhD medievalist or whatever, you can, you can, as a lay person, just look at these really cool books. And it's the British Library in London. Now, in those days, in addition to being part of the uh, Nine Herbs Charm, uh, Nettles was thought to be what's called a galactagogue, and that's one of my favorite herbal terms of all time. I love that term because it sounds very Star Wars-ish and very Star Trek-y. And basically, galactagogue is something that causes um, uh, milk to be more prolific in breastfeeding moms. So it promotes lactation. Now, a process called urtication or flogging with nettles was quite popular in the dark to middle ages in Europe. It's the process of deliberately applying stinging nettles to the skin to promote redness or inflammation. So you could do this either by rolling about in a patch of nettles, and I highly recommend nobody do this on purpose, and certainly don't make your children do this. You could be picked up for child abuse. And I also don't recommend doing what they used to do in those days was flogging themselves with bunch of uh, nettles on whatever the affected joint was. 
This process was considered to be what's called a rubifacient, something that causes redness, and it was used as a folk medicine for treating rheumatism. Now, some people today throughout the world still do this. Uh, if they have very terrible arthritis or sore joints, uh, they roll around or rub um, roll around in or rub on uh, raw stinging nettles on affected joints. And I want to say once again, I do not recommend doing this. But those who do do this, they they apparently find it very healing. Now nettles, as I said before, are extremely nutritious. And obviously you don't want to eat them raw in, you know, in, in the field, but when they're dried, stir fried or boiled, the stinging part of nettles goes away, but the good stuff is still there. Now nettles have the following components. They have vitamins A, C, and K, some B vitamins. They have lots of minerals, calcium, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, and sodium. They have linoleic acid and other types of essential fatty acids. They have all of the essential amino acids, and that's pretty amazing. And it's also kind of rare in the plant world. Usually you have to combine plants to get full amino acids, but this plant has all of them. Um, it has the polyphenols, like I said, coumarin, flavonoids, quercetin, and they also have a lot of pigments. It's beta carotene, lutein, and other carotenoids. And for those of you like myself with aging eyes, I'm actually supplementing with lutein uh, and it's really helping my eyes, but I'm going to also start incorporating uh, stinging nettles into my diet. And this slide shows you all the different activities that this wonderful plant does. Now, the scientific name Urtica dioica comes from the Latin word oro, which means to burn, because its leaves can cause a temporary burning sensation upon contact. Now, stinging nettle harbors all sorts of compounds that may reduce inflammation. There's been some really interesting studies saying that it reduces prostate size and it can help treat the symptoms of enlarged prostate in men with benign prostatic hypertrophy or BPH. Um, there's really promising studies that freeze dried stinging nettles. And the freeze dried is how you keep those stingy parts in. And the stingy parts help reduce hay fever symptoms. Um, stinging nettle may help lower blood pressure by allowing your blood vessels to relax and reducing the force of your heart's contractions. Um, we're also finding in both human and animal studies uh, stinging nettle is linked to lower blood sugar levels, so it helps lower your blood sugar. And um, this plant contains compounds that may mimic the effects of insulin, which helps to lower blood, blood sugar. Now, it also reduces bleeding. Uh, it's got a lot of antioxidant properties which protect liver against damage by toxins, heavy metals. And this is why stinging nettle is such a great spring tonic. Uh, it's a natural diuretic. Um, this body may help your body, this plant may help your body shed excessive salt and water. And when you shed those items, you actually may lower blood pressure temporarily. And it's also very good uh, for healing burns and wounds. And only, again, not fresh, use a, a tincture or a stinging nettle cream. And this helps uh, wound healing. And those are all the really cool things that are in stinging nettle. And if you're taking biochemistry or organic chemistry, you know what these things stand for. Now, nettle is also really great for the garden. And I've put a link in an article in the program notes, if you want more information on the subject, it's great to grow as well as use as a soil and garden amendment. Where I live, nettles grow everywhere and I can simply harvest them with gloves. 
quite easily, and I hope to start them in my garden this year. Nettles are quite happy to be around humans, especially farms, and you will see them growing next to barns and houses and all sorts of places where people walk. They just like people. Now, nettle tea is good for the soil as well as a compost. So to use it in your compost or in your soil, you just add one part of nettle tea to 10 parts water. And it's very rich in nitrogen. And nitrogen, if you use too much nitrogen in your soil, it makes your plants grow really big, but the nutritional value isn't great. And it also wears out the soil. But if you use something like nettle tea, it's natural nitrogen and it's really um, good for uh, leafy vegetables like kale, chard, and spinach, if that's what you're growing in your garden. You can also cut nettles and lay them around larger plants or shrubby fruits, and they serve as a wonderful, valuable mulch. Their high nitrogen content also makes them a natural compost activator. In other words, by adding them to your compost heap, you'll speed up the decomposition process, mix them in with a wide range of other compostable ingredients, including drier ingredients such as plain cardboard, dried leaves, prunings. Just make sure not to include any of the roots or seed heads or they'll start growing in your compost. Now, if you're worried about pests and disease in your garden, nettles will come to your rescue. Another benefit of growing stinging nettle is that it actually can reduce the risk of pest infestation for surrounding crops. And they're so valuable, nettles are included in the biodynamic soil amendments as a tea from fermented leaves. And I've le left a link in the program notes on how they are used. Now in Chinese herbalism, nettles are called shun ma, and that's shun ma in Chinese characters. And now in traditional Chinese medical terms, it's a yin tonic, meaning that it strengthens the yin aspect of the self. It helps the body cool itself down more effectively, as well as strengthening all the vital organs. Especially, it's very good for the immune system, kidneys and liver. In traditional Chinese medicine, nettles has been long known for its capacity to treat skin eczema, congested lungs, gout, edema, and generally enriching kidney and liver yin. Throughout Chinese history, nettles were also believed to help break curses and spells. So, hey. Nettles are also used in Ayurveda, and it's called vichwa in Sanskrit, and my apologies for my accent. Uh, from an Ayurvedic perspective, nettle serves as a nourishing and regenerative tonic, particularly for the kidneys and the adrenals. This herb in Ayurveda increases vitality, making it per particularly useful for individuals who run down from stress or illness or need extra nourishment during convalescent, old age, pregnancy, or breastfeeding. The baby leaves at the top of the plant have been used throughout history in food and drinks to nourish and detoxify the body in the spring. And the qualities in Ayurveda, they're light, dry, and penetrating. The taste is astringent, bitter, sweet, and salty, which, wow, that's kind of everything. It's uh, effect, It's very cooling. And after it's digested, the effect transforms into heating. Now, it affects the doshas, um, the vata. It increases vata and it reduces uh, pitta kapha. And uh, the datu, it affects plasma, blood flow, and bone marrow. But its main effects in Ayurveda, which is in anything particularly, is it, um, it purifies and it reduces inflammation. And the main action in Ayurveda is kidney and adrenals, as well as women's reproductive system. And it's also thought to clear toxins from the body. Now, as long as there were people and nettles, 
there have been the use of nettles by people in North America. The Miwok and the Hesh, and uh, apologies again for my mispronunciation, Heschiat people used the plant to relieve muscle and joint pains. And they did this like their medieval counterparts by whipping uh, strips of fresh nettles over joints and painful areas. The Cherokees used the tea as a stomach tonic and the Cree considered nettles an important herb for women during childbirth. And it's probably because it's astringent properties to help stop bleeding after birth. And that really was a big risk. It still is uh, the bleeding after childbirth. So nettles was a good herb to drink to help prevent that. Now, nettles has, as you can imagine from everything that I'm blathering on about, it has so many healing properties because of its structure lots of chlorophyll and a deep taproot. Chlorophyll is to a plant what hemoglobin is to human blood. And chlorophyll is the substance that carries oxygen and also transforms sunlight into energy for the plant. And when we eat a plant, we're essentially eating transformed sunlight. All of that chlorophyll absorbs a lot of sunlight into the plant, which in turn, <clears throat> takes the energy of the sun deep into the soil. And this is why both the leaves and the root are so healing. Now, this slide is from our beloved Wikipedia, and it's a close-up of fibers that cause the stinging. These are the little needles that cause stinging nettles to sting. But they're also what is so healing about the plant. Some botanists and linguists think the word nettle is a form of the word needle, which describes the action of these structures and causes the stinging. These fibers release histamines, which are the substances in the blood that are involved in the allergic reaction. It's thought that these, fiber, these, these fibers and what they release into the blood in the long run actually reduce histamines in the body. And while you know those over-the-counter drugs you take that have those amazing television commercials of people happily surfing through fields of ragweed, not sneezing or coughing, those drugs are called antihistamines. And one of my favorite studies, which is available on PubMed, looked at people with seasonal allergies and patients were given either freeze-dried nettles or a placebo. And after the sinonasal outcome test 22, which is known as the SNOT 22 test, uh, a significant improvement in clinical symptoms severity was observed. Don't you just love that the test for runny noses is called the SNOT 22 test? your government tax dollars at work. So a great way to prevent seasonal allergies is to take freeze dried nettles in capsule form during allergy season. And you take that along with beta carotone, a bioflavonoid such as hesperidin, uh, or simply rosehip vitamin C tablets along with evening primrose oil. And all of these supplements combine help your body to not react to allergens in the air, which should be quite ubiquitous this year with so much rain and snow that we've experienced. Obviously, if you're highly allergic, please avoid rolling around naked in nettle patches and please don't flog yourself. One of the best ways to take nettles is through powdered capsules or tinctures. There's also tea and it's, it's quite delicious actually. It's very green tasting. And for allergies, it's important to take freeze dried powdered as this process maintains those stinging fibers best and boiling or steeping them gets rid of those structures. When I was visiting Macedonia a while ago, I was treated, treated to a traditional supper with a mountain community. It was a really cool place. It's outside of Bitola for anybody who knows what I'm talking about. 
and the ladies of the village would go into the mountains and marshes and collect nettles during the spring and summer and dry them. And they would eat these nettles throughout the winter when access to fresh fruits and vegetables was simply not available. I was told this was how everyone stayed healthy by eating these dried stinging nettles. <clears throat> and the scientific reason is this is how the locals got vitamins, specifically vitamin C in the winter. So eat your nettles in soup or the Slavic way through banitsa, which is quite delicious. And if you did not know you were eating nettles instead of spinach, you, would, you actually would never know. There are a plethora of recipes on the internet for all sorts of nettle foods from Irish to Indian to African to Russian. And every single one of them is just absolutely delicious. And again, pick with gloves on as soon as they are cooked, the stinging part goes away. So however you want to use nettles as a preventative for allergies, as a spring tonic, as a delicious meal, or to nourish your garden, I hope you come to appreciate the amazing gift that Urtica dialka, or stinging nettles, is to all of us on this wonderful earth we share.